The following program is brought to you by the faithful friends and partners of Gregory Dickow Ministries. Did you know that your life was designed to give God glory? How is that possible? It's possible when your life is blessed. The blessed life is a choice. We all have pain, but we must make a choice. What will you become because of the pain you've endured? The prayer of Jabez shows us that prayer from pain produces power that brings you into God's purpose. Like Jabez, we can ask God to bless us, to enlarge us, and to deliver us from evil, and expect He'll grant our request. God did not create us to be dominated by anything. He created us to dominate the devil and dominate fear and dominate anxiety and dominate poverty and dominate sickness and dominate over sin and not be dominated by a thing in this world. And the blessing is the secret to the dominion that God wants you to walk in. Blessed life is a life where your family is growing in the Lord. The blessed life is where your marriage is getting better. The blessed life is when your body is getting better. The same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwells inside of your body. The blessed life is as you get older, you get strong. You don't get weaker all the time. You get stronger. The blessed life is the life that, is, that always has the right thing to say at the right time. The blessed life is having the wisdom of God. The blessed life is having the favor of God surround you like a shield. The blessed life is having the power that you need to deal with whatever you're facing in life. In fact, the word blessed means empowered to succeed. Empowered to succeed. The word cursed means to be, to be defined and confined by your past and by your pain. To be defined and confined by your past and by your pain. That's the cursed life where I'm defined by my pain. I'm defined by my past. I'm confined. I'm imprisoned by my past. I'm imprisoned by my pain. And today we're going to break out of whatever pain we've had. We're going to break out of our past. We're going to break out of whatever's defined us and whatever has confined us because God wants us to live the blessed life. But there's something that I want to ask of you today. I really want to ask you something really important, and that is I'm going to ask you to be bold today. I'm going to ask you to dare to believe. I'm going to ask you to dare to expect more in your life of God's favor and blessing than you have ever expected in your life. I'm going to ask today that you dare to believe for all that God has for you. I mean that, Lord, I don't even know all that you have for me and my family and my destiny and the calling of God upon my life. I don't know all of it, but I want all of it. Anybody with me? You know, well, there's, a, there's a scripture that Jesus said. Have you ever, have you ever prayed like this? Because some of us have. I know I, I prayed like this in the past when I didn't understand prayer. Where I would pray, God, show me what you want me to do so I can decide if I'm going to do it. <laughs> Maybe you didn't use those exact words, but that was your attitude, right? Lord, show me what you want me to do. I, in other words, I need to see it first. I need to understand it first so that I can then decide if I want to do it. But Jesus said... And I believe it's in John chapter 7, and don't quote me on this, but you can look it up later, Google it or whatever. John chapter 7, verse 17, Jesus said, if you want to know my teaching, whether it's of God or not, first, he says, are you willing to do it? In other words, he says, you got to be willing to do it first. If anyone wants to do his will, he shall know. Um, maybe this isn't the exact translation that I've used, but it it literally is translated as, if you want to know what God wants you to do, are you willing to do it? Sometimes we're not willing to do it until we hear it first. 
well, Lord, show me what your will is for my life. And then let's say that, you know, God wants you to become a missionary to Africa, a missionary to India. And you're like, show me, Lord, what you want me to do as long as it's not being a missionary to Africa or India. Like my wife, before we met, she said, Lord, show me my husband and who he's supposed to be, and who he, who he's, who he's supposed to be. Not, well, who he's supposed to be. I'm still becoming who I'm supposed to be. But she said, um, Lord, show me who my husband's supposed to be as long as he's not a pastor or an evangelist with black hair. <laughs> Ouch. We need to be willing to do it before we know it. Because we'll never really know it if we're not first willing to do it. Are you with me so far? Now, I'm going to ask you to do something today. I'm going to ask you to be bold. I'm going to ask you to be daring. I'm going to ask you, like Captain Kirk said, to go where no man has gone before. I mean, where you are out there willing to be bold and daring with God to where it almost seems like you're asking for too much. Now you cannot ask for too much because Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20 says, everybody knows this, and if you don't, you probably heard it. It says God is able to do exceeding abundantly above and beyond all that you can ask or think according to the power that works within him. Oh man. In other words, God is not limited if you're not limited. But if we're limited in our asking, God's limited in his doing. If we're limited in our asking, God's limited in his performing. If we're limited in our boldness to ask, then we're limiting God to do above and beyond what, he, what we can ask or think. You see, we drive the train or we drive the bus of what God is able to do in our lives by based on what we ask him to do. How bold are we going to be to go where no man has gone before? How daring are we going to be today? I mean, if you've been asking God to meet your needs, ask him to meet your needs and all your family's needs. If you're, if you're bold enough to ask him to, to heal your body, ask him to heal everybody's body that you're ever going to come in contact with so that when you pray for them, you expect them to be healed too. In other words, we've got to be boldly asking for more and more and more and more. And it might sound greedy, but it's not. And I'm going to prove it to you in the Bible. Are you ready for that? Jesus, didn't the, doesn't the Bible say you have not because you ask not? I'm going to ask you to be bold today. I'm going to ask you to believe that this blessed life we've been talking about, I'm going to ask you to believe a few things about it. And th these are real simple and then I'll get into the, the text of the teaching. But I'm going to ask you to believe that the blessed life is God's idea. When God created Adam and Eve in Genesis chapter 1, it says the first thing he did after he created them, verse 28, and he blessed them. The first thing he did after he created them was he blessed them. He empowered them. And he said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over it. Does this sound like a God who's limited? Does this sound like a God who wants his people limited? Man, he wants you to be blessed, to be fruitful, to multiply, to fill the earth, to subdue the earth, to have dominion in the earth. God did not create us to be dominated by anything. He created us to dominate the devil and dominate fear and dominate anxiety and dominate poverty and dominate sickness and dominate over sin and not be dominated by a thing in this world. Amen. And the blessing is the secret to the dominion that God wants you to walk in. The blessing is the secret to the fruitfulness that God wants you to walk in. The blessing is the secret to, being, to multiplying yourself in this life, to filling the earth like he created you to, to have dominion in this life. The blessing is the secret to experience all that God has for you and all that God wants you to do. So I want you to see, number one, the blessed life that we're talking about is God's idea. Number two, the blessed life is God's will for your life. And number three, the blessed life is essential 
to fulfill God's purpose for your life. In other words, we would never send a soldier, our nation would never send a soldier into battle without giving him the equipment that he needs to win that battle or to give him a reasonable chance to win that battle, right? We're not sending our soldiers into, into battle without, without guns, without protection, without helmets, without training, without equipment. We equip our soldiers to handle their situation and any situation that they potentially might face to handle it with ability, to handle it with power, to handle it with the blessing of our government and the blessing of this nation. Our nation blesses our soldiers with the power to do what we have assigned them and what they volunteered to do and what we have commissioned them to go into the world and do for us. They cannot do it without the blessing of this nation, which means that we have given them the right equipment to do it. And God doesn't call you to do anything in life without giving you the equipment to do it. God doesn't ask you to do anything in this world without giving you the equipment to do it. And the equipment is the blessing. This blessed life is essential for us to be able to do what God's called us to do. How can we reach the world if we're not blessed with his wisdom? If we're not blessed with his ability? If we're not blessed with his goodness? If we're not blessed with his favor? If we're not blessed with his spirit? If we're not blessed with his gifts? If we're not blessed with his anointing? If we're not blessed with his power, we cannot fulfill the assignment that each of us has been given by God. And every one of us has been given an assignment. And our journey is to discover that assignment, to develop in that assignment, and then to complete that assignment before the Lord returns. Can anybody say amen to that? Amen. So, this blessed life is God's idea, number one. This blessed life is God's will, number two. This blessed life is necessary to fulfill his purpose. And this blessed life is your right as a child of God. It's your right as a child of God. You know, remember in Luke chapter 13, that woman that was bent over for 18 years, she was in that condition, and Jesus quoted T.D. Jakes and said, woman, thou art loosed. <laughs> and she stood up for the first time straight after 18 years being bent double over. Listen. I'm going to tell you right now, Jesus said about that woman when they criticized him for healing her on the Sabbath, he said, this woman is a daughter of Abraham, therefore she has every right to be healed on the Sabbath day. She's a daughter of Abraham. The Bible says in Galatians 3.29, if we belong to Christ, we're Abraham's seed. We're heirs according to the promises of God. Whatever, God, whatever promise God made to Abraham, he made it to you also. And you have every right, you have every right to this blessed life. It's your right as a child of God. To as many as received him, to them he gave the power to become children of God. He gave them the power to be blessed. He gave them the power to fulfill their God-ordained purpose in life. Are you with me still? In Hebrews chapter 4, it says this in verse 16. And I want to read this to you and then we're going to go to 1 Chronicles chapter 16. Um, but in Hebrews chapter 4, in verse 16... Paul the Apostle, the writer of the book of Hebrews, says this. Let us come boldly to the throne of grace that we might obtain mercy and find grace to help in our time of need. Let me ask you something. There is not just a direction of where to go. He's telling us to go to the throne of grace when we have any need at all. To go to the throne of grace. He's not just telling us where to go. He's not just telling us what kind of throne God sits on. A throne of grace. But he also is telling us how to go. He said let us go boldly. Or in this, in this tense he says let us come boldly to the throne of grace. He doesn't say come sheepishly. He doesn't co say come ashamed. He doesn't say come begging. He says come boldly. Now we should not come boldly if he doesn't tell us to come boldly. But if he tells us to come boldly, then let us come boldly to honor the Lord. Because why can we come boldly? Because the Bible says we've been washed by the blood of Jesus. So as far as God is concerned, in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 19, as far as God is concerned, we're as washed and as holy as Jesus is in God's eyes. Therefore, we have the right 
to have access to God's throne of grace to receive from him, we have the same right as if it was Jesus himself coming to the throne of God's grace to receive from him. Amen. We have that right because we've been washed. We have that right because we've been cleansed. We have that right because of the blood of the lamb. Can anybody say amen? amen. Now listen, this is important because he says let us come boldly. So I'm asking you to be bold today. I'm challenging you to be bold today. I'm asking you to dare. Anybody ever play the game truth or dare when you were a kid? Uh, or spin the bottle or whatever, you, you know. Anybody even know what I'm talking about, some of those old games? That's not the same thing. But they were all, you know, we played all the games the same night. And <laughs> have you ever been dared to do something? You know, some, when somebody says, I dare you to do it, there's, isn't there something inside of you that's like, okay, man, I'm ready to do Oh, man, I want to do it. And then fear stops you or getting in trouble stops you. But there's something inside of us that wants to dare and wants to go beyond and wants to believe for bigger things than what we're experiencing right now. There's something inside of us that is hungry for more. There's something inside of us that knows this is not all there is. There's something inside of us that's so just like ready to just, oh, uh, just go for it and receive everything that God has. And that's why he said we need to have confidence to enter boldly by the blood of Jesus and come to the throne of his grace to receive mercy and grace in our time of need. Now I'm going to tell you something about the blessed life and then I'll show you. Go, you can go to 1 Chronicles chapter 4. And on our way over there, go to 1 Chronicles chapter 4. I want to teach you out of that passage a little bit as well. But I want to remind you that this blessed life is a choice. Jesus has done his part. He shed his blood on the cross to deliver you from sin, from the power of the devil, and to deliver you from the curse of the law. But now it's up to you if you want to walk in that blessing. It's a choice that we make in life to choose the blessing or the cursing. Now Jesus already paid for the curse to, for us to be delivered from the curse, but we can stay in our confinement. We can stay in our little prison of mediocrity if we choose to, but make no mistake about it. It is not God's will for you to stay in your prison of mediocrity or your prison of sickness or your prison of victimization or your prison of abuse or your prison of addiction or whatever prison that you were born into. The Lord wants you to know that you can choose to break out of it today. He already paid the price for it, but then in Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 15 through 17, he says, I set before you life and death, blessing and cursing, you choose. It's your choice. Didn't he say that? He said, it's your choice. I've set before you life and death, life and good, death and evil, blessing and cursing, verse 16, 17 goes on to say, and he said, man, it is up to you. It is up to us to choose blessing or choose cursing. Choose this day. Man, today is the day that I choose to walk in the fullness of God's blessing in my life. And I'm going to dare to believe for every bit of it. I'm going to dare to believe that it's God's will for me. I'm going to dare to believe that I need it so that I can do what God's called me to do. And I'm going to dare to believe that it's my right as a child of God to walk in all of God's power, all of God's authority. And I'm going to walk in the... I'm going to walk in the same power that those boys walked in when they healed the sick, raised the dead, cleansed the lepers, and cast out demons. Freely we've received, freely give. That's the power and the blessing that we're supposed to be walking in. Amen? Amen. We're not supposed to walk into a situation and be afraid. We're supposed to walk into a situation and transform the atmosphere. That's what God's created us to do. We're the transformers. We're the real transformers. Every movie idea, every superhero idea, every Marvel idea, every comic strip idea, every idea that's ever come about superheroes came from the Bible first because the Bible says if any man is in Christ, he's a new creature, he's a part of a new species of being. We're super, superhumans in Christ. We're born into his power. We're sons of God. We're not just sons of men anymore. We're sons of God now. We're made in his image. You might... You might, on the outside, you might look like your mother or father, but on the inside, you look like your heavenly father. Amen. Did you know that your life was designed to give God glory? How is that possible? 
It's possible when your life is blessed. The blessed life is a choice. We all have pain, but we must make a choice. What will you become because of the pain you've endured? The prayer of Jabez shows us that prayer from pain produces power that brings you into God's purpose. Like Jabez, we can ask God to bless us, to enlarge us, and to deliver us from evil, and expect He'll grant our request. In today's offer, you will receive today's message from Pastor Gregory Dickow in its entirety, The Prayer of Jabez, How to Pray for the Blessed Life. In Genesis 1 verse 8, the first thing God did after creating Adam and Eve was He blessed them. For your love gift of only $30, you will also receive the four CD series, Living the Blessed Life. And that's not all. When you call today, you'll receive the powerful video devotional DVD, Connect to the Power of Prayer, and the Prayer of Jabez table card, all for your love gift of only $30. Your support to this ministry by sowing your love gift enables others to experience the blessed life. You enable us to feed the hungry, clothe the naked, and continue to spread the word of God to people around the world. The Prayer of Jabez, How to Pray for the Blessed Life, Living the Blessed Life, the four CD series, Connect to the Power of Prayer, Video Devotional, and the Prayer of Jabez Table Card, all yours today for your love gift of only $30. Don't wait, call now. Well, I want to thank you for joining me for today's broadcast, and I encourage you to call to get the resources that you've heard my announcer tell you about. Hosea chapter 4, verse 6 says, God's people perish because of a lack of knowledge. It doesn't say a lack of money or a lack of friends or a lack of a college education, but a lack of knowledge. This is why I've put these resources together to give you the knowledge from God's Word to live the victorious life that God created you to live. So don't let that lack of knowledge rob you another day. Call or visit our website to get these resources today. And I also want to take a moment and say thank you for your support of this ministry. Every time you sow a seed or sow a love gift into this ministry or get one of our resources, you're literally helping me reach people that without you would remain broken, hurt, or lost forever. You're helping to change the world one life at a time. In fact, watch this special and really amazing testimony, and I'll be right back to pray for you. My name is Theodora Williamson. It was November 9th, a Saturday afternoon. My son was not feeling well on November 8th. We had taken him to the hospital, and he was discharged with a virus. And about 25 minutes later, he calls me back, and he says, Mom, Mom, help me. He said, I'm spitting up blood. So I course going to the natural realm and I'm thinking oh my god I could get out of here to my son this is my only child and while I'm rushing around in the tub all of a sudden there's this peace and the Holy Spirit tells me ah you cannot do what I can do I have you I have you calm down I was at the hospital when I walked in they were getting ready to take him to acute ICU and uh, my daughter-in-law said at that point that uh, she overheard the doctor say that he was very ill. She really didn't think he was gonna make it. And they're telling me at this point that my son's breathing was only 55, and normally you should be 96 and up. They had taken an x-ray of his lungs. They realized that he had pneumonia. They thought perhaps he was bleeding from the lungs. They didn't know, he was just, they, everything was just going haywire. And so I just started praying in the spirit at the door of his room. And then the doctor walked up and said, well, it looks, you know, so much is going on. We've got to rush him, and we don't know. I said, I know. I said, he's going to make it. I said, I trust God. You do what you have to do in the natural, but he's going to make it. No weapon for and against my son shall prosper. And I just thought that he had a chance to live. And whatever it took, I didn't care how long it took for him to be in this. I knew this was just a process, and I had to go beyond that. All of a sudden, the Holy Spirit reminded me, telecast. Pastor Dick Howell comes out, and he's speaking, and he mentions about people calling or texting maybe why we always doing healing uh, prayers. But then he said, there's a parent, and your child is in the hospital. And he said, look to the door. And oh, I was sitting where I'm sitting, and I looked to the left, I looked to the door of my son's room, and Pastor Dick House said, Jesus is standing at the door. 
He said, he's now entering the room. He said, and see him walking past the bed of your child. He said, he's now at the head of the bed. He said, and Jesus is wrapping his arms around your child. I went home. I was gone for six days. I came back on the seventh day. They had taken the tubes out of his throat. And that's when all the doctors and everybody were crying and said it was a miracle because I found out then that no one expected him to live except me. But I know who the healer is. And I never knew God could love like he showed me. Not only does he love me, he loves my son. And my son knows he's been given a second chance. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, I thank you that you will give my viewer, my friend, hope right now that things can change, hope that they can turn around beginning today, hope that things can get better in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, remember, God loves you and so do I. Now, don't miss our next broadcast. I can't wait to see you then on The Power to Change Today. God bless. Introducing the NIV Live Complete Audio Bible Presentation. I say repent! It's a cinematic production. Go! The Lord will watch over us! Go now! 79 audio CDs, up to six complete mobile and digital downloads, the behind-the-scenes making of NIV Live DVD, and the online web application scripture study version. This special offer for your love gift of $75. Holidays are approaching. Get yours today. It's time to receive the power you need in life to win. Join Gregory Dickow for the power to change today. Connect to the power of God with each and every program as Pastor Dickow shares biblical insight and revelation to shift your thinking and change your world. Tap into the power, tap into the anointing, tap into the word on the power to change today with Gregory Dickow each week right here on this station. This program has been brought to you by the faithful friends and partners of Gregory Dickow Ministries.